Hola and welcome to this month's market report uh, for the local property market in your area. As usual we will take a quick look at the facts, the figures, the news and the things of interest affecting all homeowners, buyers and sellers in the Granada province. Let's dive in. Well, who can believe that uh, we're here in December talking about the uh, the year 2022? Um, who on earth thought it would go by so quickly? Certainly not here, it's been a hectic year. But we'll give our end of year report soon. In the meantime, let's have a look at what's happened in the market last month. In Lanharam, there were 61 properties available for sale with an average asking price of 100,000 euros or 715 euros per square meter. In Orgiva, there were 58 properties available for sale with an average asking price of 204,500 euros or 1,114 euros per square meter. Moving over into Lucrin Valley, uh, if we looked at the municipality of Lucrin, there were 37 properties available for sale with an average asking price around 130,000 euros or 982 euros per square meter. Zeroing in uh, on Pinos do Bae in La Crim Valley, there were 14 properties available for sale with an average asking price of 132,500 euros or 741 euros per square meter. So what's happening in the market in general, um, as anyone who follows our monthly reports will know, uh, we, what we've seen is a re big reduction in the amount of available stock. Now interestingly that's combined and coincided with some significant changes that are happening in the property market, which we're going to have a look at in some more detail later on. There is still good demand for properties and the right properties priced at the right prices with the right marketing are still selling at a good rate. But there's some important things to know and to adapt to the changes in the current marketplace. We'll have a look at that very shortly. In the meantime, let's have a look at some of the news in the marketplace. Cryptocurrency. You may be into crypto, you may not, uh, but there are some changes that, affect, that are affecting any uh, cryptocurrency holders uh, in Spain. Unbeknownst to most people, uh, there's been some changes in tax legislation that have come in specifically regarding crypto. And that is actually that any uh, transactions taking place, you need to pay a capital gain and declare a capital gain where made on each individual transaction revolving around crypto. Crypto, not just the overall. That could mean potentially, for example, if you made a gain and then sold to realize that gain, but subsequently made a loss later on, they can't be offset against each other. Now, that does seem a bit counterintuitive, but hey, welcome to Spain. Those are the rules here are often don't seem to make much common sense. Any Spanish tax residents are also under a legal obligation to declare these. Also, if you hold uh, any crypto assets over the value of 50,000 euros, you have an obligation to declare them on your annual 720 tax return. If you were in a position where you have over 2 million euros uh, of crypto assets, then th this also triggers additional wealth tax payable just on holding them. So there are some quite significant changes that are taking place around crypto assets. Um, if you hold these and you're unsure, it's very worthwhile looking into what the current changes are and make sure you have adjusted your tax situation accordingly. As ever, if you have any questions on this and are unsure, don't forget to contact us in private or pop a question below and uh, we will answer it the best we can. We can't provide any specific tax advice because everyone's individual circumstances are personal, but we can certainly give you some general guidance. Whilst crypto certainly has taken a big dive lately, um, there are many people that are getting in at the current state of play with a view to maybe making some gains further on. So another reason to really have a good look at the tax situation, if, especially if crypto assets form part of your broader uh, diverse portfolio. Vitios ocultos, or hidden defects. This is something that uh, is raising its ugly head yet again in the marketplace and we've seen several instances recently uh, where this has come up. Now, what are they? 
In essence, they are things that are being hidden or defects that have been hidden from potential purchasers by the seller uh, of a property and the, sell the buyer would then have a future claim against the seller for those hidden defects. These claims can be for up to six months. There are some very specific criteria around these, which comes from Article 1484 of the Civil Code. In brief, these are items that have been hidden from the seller deliberately or knowingly not disclosed. Now, there's a broad selection of what these can include, but in essence, it's items that, for example, if you knew that there was some faulty part of the building that had been plastered over in order to hide that and was not declared to a potential purchaser. That's just one example of the many things that could be included. However, there are also quite a few caveats to this. It's particularly important that the buyer is aware that uh, it cannot be a vitio occulto or a hidden defect if the buyer was able to inspect it prior to purchase. That would mean potentially if a property, someone is viewing a property, they have an opportunity to inspect, or if there's a period between uh, viewing the property and then signing a compraventa, that they have had an opportunity to have any investigations and inspections that they may have required on the property. Usually when it comes to signing a compraventa for a property, uh, the buyer is signing to say that they are aware of the condition of the property and have made all inspections that they wish to. This could nullify any future claim if it was something, for example, if it was damp or faulty wiring or the plumbing didn't work correctly, uh, these things would be covered under that. This is all very well described uh, under the civil code, so it's a really good idea to have an understanding of how that could affect you. As ever, if you're unsure, don't hesitate to pop a comment below or to ask us in person and we'll happily give you the best advice to help you buy your home safely in Spain and navigate some of the slightly unusual and quirky laws that there are around purchasing a property here. Interestingly, this leads us on to a subject which uh, we wrote an article recently on about how to choose a buyer or legal advisor to help you purchase a property safely in Spain. Many people think that uh, buying a property in Spain is going to be very similar to their home country, particularly from Northern Europe, the US, uh, Australia, etc., where laws around planning and uh, conveyancing are very, very different to the way things operate here in Spain. It only takes a quick Google search to read all of the horror stories of how people have bought illegal properties, unregistered properties, uh, and many other uh, catastrophic examples of things that have happened. So how do you do that and how do you choose uh, and find a lawyer who is going to help you buy a property safely? One thing that's really important to understand here, and we've had a couple of examples of this uh, here in transactions that have happened in the last month, where buyers have made the assumption that a lawyer is going to check specific things that they may have done in their home country, but for the lawyer here, that's not really important, so they wouldn't bother. And surprisingly, one of those things is actually, what are you actually buying? There's been an example where someone, the seller's lawyer and the buyer's lawyer, never bothered to check that the description and the numerical references for the piece of land that they were looking to buy were actually correct and related to the specific property. Fortunately, we were able to spot this at the very last minute uh, and prevent the buyer from proceeding with a purchase that would have meant they were buying an entirely separate piece of land to the one that they thought they were doing so. Another recent example was where a lawyer advised their client that they should have an AFO or an AFO uh, on the property that they were looking to buy. Now, as it turned out, that would have been very bad advice for the client on the basis that they wanted to do some other works, changes and amendments to the property. The property already had a certificado de edificación de existente, uh, which would have allowed them to do certain changes to the property before subsequently applying for any existing registrations. If they continued down the vein that the lawyer was advising, they've not been able to do what they wanted to do. 
Now again, we were able to pick this up while reviewing the contracts with the buyer and uh, managed to get this resolved. But the problem here is the buyer had asked a general question to the lawyer rather than a very specific question. So it's really important to know the exact questions you need to ask in order to get the answers that you need rather than generic questioning. One of the problems here uh, has come up many times is, uh, is the property legal? Well, in often cases, yes, it can be legal, but not necessarily legal for the purposes that you want to use it for, i.e., could it only be legal as a nave and not as a vivienda, vivienda meaning you can live in it permanently, and nave being an agricultural building. It's really important you understand the differences between the two um, and you know which questions to specifically ask a lawyer. So again, don't hesitate to get in touch if you need a hand with that. Um, if We can certainly help you with the right questioning to ask a lawyer in order to ensure you're getting the advice that you need. So when it comes to the international markets and market sentiment in general, uh, we're being asked a lot at the moment, what's going to happen to the property market in 2023? Well, here's the answer that many people will be giving. It's going up, it's going down, it's going sideways. This is going to happen, that's going to happen. Let me tell you the honest answer. No one knows for certain. No one can give you an exact position on what's going to happen in the market. But there's one thing for sure. Changes are happening and you would have to have your head buried in the sand really to not understand that the world economy is in a state of flux, the cost of living is rising, in interest rates are rising uh, across the world and inflation is something that many uh, central banks are trying to tackle head on using interest rates uh, as their main instrument to tackle this. Now, of course, many people would expect as a real estate agent for us to be talking up the market and saying everything's wonderful and positive. Well, unfortunately, we're in the business of being real and telling the truth about these things. So let's not try and pretend that the market is not changing. It certainly is. Does that mean prices are going to take a massive tumble and dive off a cliff? In my opinion, no. What we're seeing is a change in the demand structure and the appetite for future price increases. Often statistically, it's very easy for the press and the market to say prices have come down a certain amount when what they actually mean is year on year, they've not risen as much. Very interesting when they play around with statistics to make the headlines appear to the narrative that they're telling. So, what's really happening? Well, in reality, there's certainly going to be a softening of prices. What that means is prices are not going to go up at the rate that they have been. In fact, my personal prediction for next year is that house prices across the Granada province of Spain will remain fairly static um, compared to the increases we've seen in recent years. In certain markets across the world, we are starting to see that softening. Well, not starting, it's already happened in many of the mature markets across the world. What that means is, for anyone who's looking to sell a property in the market in the next 12 months, you need to readjust your thinking and make sure that your marketing strategy is aligned with the current market conditions. If you currently have a property on the market that you are looking to sell and your marketing strategy was defined several months ago, this needs an urgent review. So when you're having your monthly marketing review with your agent, there really should be a big conversation around adjusting the marketing strategy to fit the current marketplace. And if you're unsure on, on what that means for your property, don't hesitate to get in touch or pop a comment below and we can help you with some guidance through that. As ever, and in any market, marketplace, it's always important to understand the purpose of purchasing a property. If you're looking for an investment property to flip around and make money on, then that's a very different uh, criteria that you need to look at for purchasing than for buying a property to live in. Always remember buying a property to live in is a long-term investment and if you're planning to retire and live in it for the next 20 years, the price today is not really going to be relevant. If it's for a holiday home, you also need to factor in the enjoyment value that you're going to get from that. Are you going to use it for three or four holidays a year for the next 10 years? Well, actually, does the, if the price fluctuates a little bit over the next 10 years, does that really matter? Uh, probably not in the long run. Uh, so there are many variables to look at, but in essence, what's happening in the market 
Uh, the market is still resilient. That, I think that would be the best phrase. Um, if you want some more detailed information on that and how individual local areas are affected, again, pop a comment below or get in touch and we'd be happy to go through that in some more detail for you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, look out for more videos around your local property market coming soon. And if you would have any individual questions that you would like answering, feel free to pop us a, an email, pop us a message or comment on any of our posts and we'd be happy to help. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.